Hooks, as you can imagine, hooking up with a solar plane <laughs> live on the radio through a couple of widgets and a couple of apps and a couple of wires. It's taking us a uh, second or two. We should say that uh, the plane, the solar impulse is flying from Dallas to St. Louis. And uh, if you go to stltoday.com or ktrs.com, we are showing you a map right now of the plane uh, as it flies. Uh, it is just going over uh, Holdenville, with no relation to former Governor Bob Holden. Holdenville, which is uh, just outside of Oklahoma City. Bertrand Picard is a Swiss psychiatrist and balloonist. And you, uh, Bertrand, are the pilot of the solar impulse. Let me hit the button here. Uh Oh, we, I thought we had him. We had him. thought we had him. We we're all ready to go. He is uh, flying from Dallas to St. Louis. Took off at 4.06 a.m. this morning while I was making sure old Molly was outside doing her business. Uh, he was taking off from Dallas and flying the solar-powered car, uh, solar-powered plane, I should say, uh, to uh, St. Louis. Uh, Picard... Uh, Bertrand Picard, welcome to the Big 550 KTRS. Bertrand, can you... when I am on the air. Bertrand, you are on the air right now. Okay, so good morning. Good, good morning to everybody. Good morning to... I am to now 5,000 feet after... Five and a half hours of flight north of Dallas, and I am now heading north in the direction of St. Louis. Uh, tell us exactly where you are. So, I will give you this immediately with the navigation system. Uh, what is the nearest point where I am. I will, I am at Holdenville. Holdenville. You are in Holdenville. We can see that from the uh, map that uh, you are, uh, that we're, we're, we're tracking you on. It's actually quite extraordinary the fact that we're able to uh, watch this uh, map uh, as you fly here to St. Louis, uh, Bertrand Picard, who is the a balloonist and the pilot of the Solver imp, imp, uh, Impulse, tell us a little bit about your airplane. Yes, you have to imagine an airplane that has the wingspan of a jumbo jet, 208 feet in the wingspan, but only the weight of a small car. So it makes it extremely efficient energy-wise. It does not need a lot of energy to stay airborne, which means that the solar panels on the wing are enough to give electricity simultaneously to the four electrical motors and to the batteries. So the batteries can be charged during day flight in order to stay airborne during the night. And this is the revolutionary part of this airplane is that this airplane can fly day and night almost forever theoretically without a single drop of fuel now uh bertrand for, if if our technology is correct we can go to your website and watch you right now fly to st louis correct Absolutely. You, the people in uh, Holdenville can look above and uh, see the, the plane, and uh, all the other people can look on the website and follow everything we're doing, because it's true that we are broadcasting live uh, all these flights in order to allow the, the people in the public to, to see what we're doing and also to understand why we're doing it, because it is not only pioneering and exploration. It's not only writing a new page in the history books of aviation. It is also a important promotion and encouragement to use everywhere on the ground also the same technologies 
than the one that we have in this airplane in order to have a world that is more energy efficient. This is important now to create jobs with these new technologies, to sustain growth with these clean technologies, and at the same time, save the natural resources and protect the environment. So it's really a win-win situation that we'd like to uh, present in an attractive way for all the people to also understand why we're doing it. We should also say Bertrand Picard, who is flying the solar impulse plane from Dallas to St. Louis, that through our technology here at the radio station, we are broadcasting live your webpage and a live video feed of your plane ride from Dallas to St. Louis on a solar plane on a radio station that is broadcasting on a newspaper's website. Some pretty extraordinary technology all the way around here. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful because it's true that now our world is a world of communication. Everybody can connect to each other. And this is also why we are not allowed anymore to say we don't know about pollution. We don't know about poverty. We don't know about the situation of human rights. Uh, now people have to know how the world goes and people have to mobilize themselves to make a better world. And uh, it's true that we need pioneering spirit also to make a, a better world, to bring new solutions, new technology, a better governance in this world. This is, this is so important. We will never be able to solve the challenges of today with old ways of thinking. This is why we need pioneers and explorers everywhere in our, in our world. Talk for a moment, uh, P uh, Bertrand Picard, who is flying the solar impulse. Uh, you're going to land at Lambert, and there's going to be some sort of inflatable hangar. Talk about that for a moment. Yes, yes. You know, the, the, the big thunderstorms of last weekend, which have destroyed so many houses and uh, made so much uh, destruction everywhere, has, have also destroyed partially the, the hangar where uh, we wanted to uh, protect the airplane on Lambert St. Louis Airport. Uh, so we are now testing for the first time an inflatable tent, an inflatable structure. It's a huge structure that can uh, protect a jumbo jet uh, because our airplane has the same wing size, uh, wingspan than a jumbo jet. And um, we have prepared this structure for the round the world flight in 2015. So it's the first time in St. Louis that we're going to to test it live during an operation. So there's going to be a lot of suspense. Uh, I'm flying now to St. Louis, but there is still nothing to protect the airplane when I arrive. And the ground team is going to inflate it during the afternoon and the early evening. So when I land around one o'clock at night, everything should be ready. So that, that's quite a suspense for us. Uh, when, when Charles Lindbergh took off from Roosevelt Field on Long Island to go across the Atlantic Ocean for the first time. He was all by himself, and it was all about weight. So important was weight that they say that he cut the margins off of the map to save every ounce. Do you have to go through something similar on your flight on this solar plane? Absolutely, absolutely. If we have the weight of a normal airplane, the solar energy would never be enough to fly day and night. So we had to make the lightest possible airplane. And this was the big challenge. You know, to have the weight of a small car or the size of a jumbo jet, uh, nobody thought it was possible in the world of aviation. And this is why it was so challenging for our team. But we have brilliant engineers, and this was also the task of Audrey Borschberg, my partner, to, to lead uh, this, uh, uh, this engineering team in order to allow this airplane to be so light and so energy efficient. And now it flies, and all the people who said it was impossible are very, very surprised. Uh, what do we have to do, Pertrand Bacard, 
to get you to change the name of the Solar Impulse to Spirit of St. Louis 2. I did not understand exactly your question, but maybe, maybe when we speak uh, about Charles Zinberg still in St. Louis, uh, you know, it brings me back to when I was 11 years old in 1969. Uh, my father was working together with NASA, and um, I was invited by chance to see the, the takeoff of several Apollo rockets to space and then to the moon. And during one of these takeoffs, I met Charles Lindbergh, and uh, we could uh, speak together a little moment, and uh, it was such an impressive moment, you know, to, to see somebody who had made history. So each time I think of St. Louis, of course, I think of this memory, and now I am... Uh, so much looking forward to finally land in, in that mythical city. Bertrand Picard, who is pilot of the Solar Impulse, not using any uh, fossil fuels as he flies from Dallas to St. Louis. You're going to arrive at uh, 1 o'clock tonight. You're broadcasting live from the cockpit on phone, and we are broadcasting you talking to us on the radio station's TV channel as well as stltoday.com so we can all see it live on our phone as we walk down the street or on a laptop or desktop in front of us. Bertrand Picard, safe travels, fly safe, don't fall asleep up there, and uh, we will talk to you when you land here in St. Louis. Absolutely. Looking forward to meet you in person. And if the people who are listening to us now want to help me to stay awake, uh, they can send on our website some, uh, uh, some uh, messages or some <laughs> jokes or some nice stories. And the nicest one will be uh, relayed to me, forwarded to me by, by the team. So it will be a way to keep in touch with your audience. Bertrand Picard, thank you very much for uh, an extraordinary conversation as you fly in a solar plane across America. Thank you very much, sir. Most welcome, and meet you soon when I land in San Luis. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Well, that's about as bizarre as it gets. Now, listen to this. If you missed any portion of our interview with the pilot who's piloting a solar-powered plane from Dallas to St. Louis, you can go right now to stltoday.com and rewind the DVR so you can see what we just recorded live. The world is getting smaller. Stay right there. We'll go from the sublime to the ridiculous when we check in with Desiree from The Bachelor. 937 on the Big 550 KTRS.